Hello and welcome back to the course on physics for engineers. So we are now on a new chapter for this course. And this is chapter 14, the chapter on electromagnetism. So we will, we will now try to uh, connect or relate the electricity the electricity and magnetism concepts in the combined concept called electromagnetism. So before we proceed with our first uh, lesson for this chapter, let us first review some concepts. So in the previous chapters or lessons, we have discussed about uh, the field of current loops and solenoids. So if you have a current loop with radius A and N turns carrying a current I, then this is the uh, this is the magnetic field given by that current loop. Now, if your current loop has a length this much that is now uh, much greater than its radius, then we usually call that a solenoid. And for a solenoid with length L and number of turns N carrying a current I, then this is the uh, magnetic field of that uh, current loop called a solenoid. So for the first lesson of this chapter, we will be talking about a phenomenon called electromagnetic induction. So electromagnetic induction is a phenomenon wherein there is an induced uh, EMF and therefore an induced current uh, in a loop, in a current loop or in a solenoid uh, due to a rel relative motion with a magnet such as what is shown in this animation here. So take note, you have a current loop, uh, you just have a, a solenoid here but with no current, no current yet. Uh, you just connect it to a voltmeter. And what happens is when you move a magnet with respect to this uh, coil of wire, you will notice that there is an induced voltage or induced EMF. So that is uh, the phenomenon called electromagnetic induction. There's an induced uh, voltage or EMF and therefore also an induced current uh, when you move a magnet with respect to a coil. So when you don't move the magnet with respect to a coil, there will be no induced current because uh, the key here is motion, relative motion. So if you now, ha if you now uh, say, move the magnet closer or far away from the coil, then there is a changing magnetic field and that causes the induced current. Same thing happens also when you have uh, an electromagnet, a solenoid or a coil uh, connected to a battery. So take note, this now becomes a, a magnet. And Usually what we call this an electromagnet. So if there's no uh, relative motion with respect to the electromagnet and the coil, or coil 1 and coil 2, then there's no induced current. But if you move the electromagnet with respect to the coil, uh, there will now be an induced current. And uh, from the keyword here, relative motion, it, you, it, you can also uh, move the coil, this coil with respect to the ele electromagnet or the magnet and you will still get the same uh, phenomenon or effect, the electromagnetic induction. There will still be induced current when there is relative motion between the two. When you move the magnet with respect to the coil or when you move the coil with respect to the magnet. Okay. So applications of electromagnetic induction is the AC generator, the most famous uh, application. Alternating current generator. This is actually the reverse of the DC motor. If you will recall a DC motor, a DC motor is basically just uh, you supply a current, you give current to a coil in the presence of magnetic field and this will create a torque on the coil causing the coil to turn. So basically here, electricity is converted into motion and that is what a motor is about. Now the reverse of a motor is a generator. So you have a coil, again in the presence of electric field, and you manually turn the coil, so motion, to generate alternating current or electricity. So the reverse, motor is uh, electricity converted into motion, a generator is 
a motion converted into electricity, the reverse of a motor. So, by manually turning the coil, you can actually, uh, in the presence of a magnet, you can actually generate alternating current. So, most of our renewable uh, power plants, AC power plants, are uh, near water poles. So, instead of manually turning the, uh, the coil, you can actually use uh, uh, gravity, uh, water pole, or a windmill. You can use the wind to turn the coil. Uh, specifically in power plants, uh, it's the turbine that uh, that rotates or turns. Okay. So another another application is the AC ammeter. So if you will recall, in DC circuits, an ammeter, a DC ammeter, on the other hand, uh, or is actually must actually be connected in a in series with the circuit. So if you want to measure the if the current flowing through this wire is direct current. You need to insert an ammeter in between here, in series, to measure the DC current. But if the current in the wire is alternating current, AC, not DC, then you will just use the concept of electromagnetic induction. So since the current in the wire is changing, meaning the magnetic field is changing, and this will induce a current in this coil. And the induced current in this coil will be used to read the current uh, flowing in this wire. So that's electromagnetic induction, wireless uh, measurement of alternating current. But again, you cannot do this on DC current because if you have that DC current, you need to connect your ammeter in series. So you need to cut this part of the wire and insert an ammeter here, a DC ammeter, if direct current uh, flows through the wire. But in the case of alternating current, and then you can measure it wirelessly. Okay, so another example also are metal detectors. So metal detectors, uh, such as the one found in, say, airports, uh, make use of electromagnetic induction. So basically, when you pass through a, uh, a machine, uh, it can detect uh, metals because there will, that's actually a giant uh, magnet. You're actually passing through a magnetic field. And if there is, um, you, ca you carry some something metallic, uh, there will be induced current on the surface of that metals. And that will change the magnetic field with, uh, when you pass through the machine. And that will be detected as a, uh, you are carrying a metallic object. So the same principle also happens in, uh, with ATM cards. So ATM cards uh, usually have a magnetic strip that you uh, slide through a reader uh, which actually induces uh, an EMF and a current in the machine reading your ATM card. So those are just some of examples of electromagnetic induction and there are actually lots of example, examples for electromagnetic induction. So that is the end of the first lesson on of this course so basically this is just an introduction on electromagnet uh, electromagnetism so i will see you again on the next uh, lessons so bye bye